In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how to set up a matinee with inside of Unreal Engine 4. So we're going to take a camera and move it through our 2.5D world that we've set up. And we're also going to give the player some controls to where if they want to interrupt this matinee, they can hit a button press and then it will fade out to black and then fade into the game uh, at that point. So if I hit shift and enter together, you can see it's going to fade to black. It's going to stop the matinee go into the actual game and you saw there was a little a little fade right there at the very end so let's go ahead and get started and take a look at how we can build this all right let's go ahead and set up our main camera our matinee that's going to move throughout the entire environment so you can see if i hit alt p and i play the game and i go ahead and hit escape um, this is going to give me a camera that's very similar to what i'm looking at through the uh, the gameplay camera and so I kind of want this distance uh, that is set up here. So that's why I'm going into the game, just hitting escape for that. Now when we go into matinee, we can say add matinee. This gives us a new window to start working with where we can lay down keyframes for different cameras and different director groups, which lets us do fades in and out and things like that. So we can actually make a brand new camera based off of what we're looking at in the world. If you go ahead and click this button right here, it'll make a camera based off of the uh, actor's current location. So go ahead and do that, and it's going to want to give you a group name for this. So let's just call this main cam uh, move, something like that. And you can see it's going to give us this movement group and field of view angle, and it automatically creates that camera for us. If we want to make sure that we're looking through the camera, go ahead and select this little icon that you see here. You can kind of see the, the uh, view shift just a little bit like that. So yellow is going to be highlighted for us. And it's actually going to make a keyframe for us right here at the zero mark. I'm going to go ahead and middle mouse drag this out just a little bit so we can see this a little bit better. And what I want is an animation that's uh, about 15 seconds long. So this is our endpoint. We can go ahead and click and drag that all the way to right about 15, right about here. And then this is our green, this is the looping area if you want to loop uh, playing of a matinee. This is the area that's going to loop, so I'm going to click and drag that all the way to the end as well. And so it's possible that we can click this little um, key and hold down control and we can move it. So I'm going to put it at about 7, uh, 7.5, right around there. If I want to get it exact, um, I can right click over this and say set time and I'll say 7.5 like that. So that's right there in the middle of the animation for us. So I could drag my time slider and I would want to make a key uh, back here at the very beginning of the animation like this. So if I just come and move the camera to roughly about the start of this thing here. Let me move this out of the way so you can see that uh, we should be uh, maybe seeing a preview of that, but I don't see that right now. So this this will work for me. I'll just get this kind of lined up right about here. And my time slider is set here at zero, and I'm going to click and say add key. Uh, let's go ahead and select the movement track and then say add key, and you can see now we've added a keyframe for that. And if we move the time slider, right here at the bottom you can see we're starting to get some movement on our camera so I want to push this all the way to the very end of the animation at the 15 second mark and then I'll take my camera and let's move it to the uh, very end right around here like this and then we get that movement track selected we'll add another key like this here so we can move the time slider and just check everything out. Now if we want, I'm going to hit, I'm going to move this down here and just hit play. And you can see it's going to uh, give us this nice kind of camera pan through the entire environment like this. And we're able to check out uh, what the speed is kind of looking like right now for this as well. So it just gets to the very end and it stops. Again, if we wanted to see that looping, we could put it on this loop and it would loop for us. So let's go ahead and check and make sure that we're actually at the end at 15 seconds. I'll just right click on there and say set time. And you can see we're not at exactly 15 seconds, so I'll do that. And I think with this red tick and this green tick as well, um, I think I can just right click over this and say to move to longest uh, track endpoint like that. And then that way I know I'm snapped right at 15 seconds. 
But what I noticed was uh, I felt like the camera was moving uh, pretty pretty fast and through there. So I wanted to give myself a little bit more time. So let's just go ahead and increase the amount of time that we're using for the animation. So if we want to move this whole slider thing around, just hit the uh, left mouse button and right mouse button at the same time, and you can click and drag this thing over this way. And again, the middle mouse drag in and out to, to zoom in and out. So that's how you can kind of pan this thing around. Let's go ahead and try to give uh, 20 seconds for this. So again, I can hold down control and move this thing here. We also have this snap button. We can snap that. So I can hold down control and then I should be able to just snap to 20 seconds. Um, let's see here. I'm going to move this endpoint as well. So now I should be able to snap there as well. And then this, I'm going to right click on there and say set time. Half the time of this will just be uh, 10 seconds now. And so we can go ahead and try that out and just see what the movement looks like. Still feels a little bit fast to me for what I'm looking for. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit, move this over. Let's try uh, 30 seconds. So I'm just going to click and drag this over right here like this. I'll right click on this keyframe after I select it and say set time. I'll put that on 30. I'll select this one, right click set time put this at 15 and let's go to the beginning of this animation and then try it out again so it uh, starts off you know kind of moving kind of slowly and then builds up and then moves through the environment I actually kind of like that if you didn't want something like that you can actually see the keyframes for this so if we turn this on and uh, we'll just go ahead and do vertical to make sure we're looking at the keys all the way through there you can see we've got this ease in and ease out for the for the keyframe data if you wanted to uh, put that to linear you could do something like this here you just select those keyframes and then put it at uh, linear for this endpoint so if you want this to be nice and straight I'm just going to click and drag this uh, this little manipulator here but this would cause the motion to just be uh, very straightforward so it's just going to start off uh, just like this I do like the ease in and ease out um, so I'm just going to put this back to auto and um, so it's just a personal choice um, so it's up to you if you want to put that um, functionality in there the other thing I want you to know is that um, this movement contains the translation and rotation. It is possible for you to break those apart. You can go over movement and then right click and say split translation and rotation. And then once you do that, it's going to allow you to independently control both the translation and the rotation. Once this has been split, we can open up the movement in through here and you can see that we've got keyframe for both uh, translation and rotation. If we just want to work with translation, we can just click this little icon here and we can actually view one channel at a time. If we want to look at the translation in Z, uh, we can just click that or Y or X. So it's possible to kind of isolate those. It looks like the movement that I've got for my camera going across the um, the world is really all in Y. So I'm going to zoom in here a little bit so I'm going to use the middle mouse wheel and scroll that and take a look here. So this is the movement across the world this way. If we uh, look at the other values that we've got here in X and then Z is going to be up and down. Um, I can make sure that these values are all the same across here. So I can right click on here and say set value and I could say this value, let's just say 172 and I'll make it a whole number like this. And then I can go here and say set value 172 as well. And then right click on here and set value and say 172 and through here. And so if I uh, drag the time slider on here and we look through that camera, I should have consistent movement going all the way through here. Now, if I wanted to have this kind of dip down in through here, I could select this key, hold down control, and I believe I can move this uh, around. Actually, I just click and drag this thing. So you can see I can move this thing up and down quite a bit like this. So our value was set to um, 172. We could try like 150 something like that and then click and drag through there and we do get it just a little bit of a dip but not very much 
So maybe you want to get just a little bit of movement on your camera. That's going to be up to you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just loop this thing real quick and check out the motion on it for now. And just check it one time before I call it quits on this camera move. I, I really don't want to do anything complex. Just want to have it kind of move through the environment like this. And it looks like everything's good. I'll just wait till it gets to the very end just to verify everything's good. It should kind of slow down just a little bit and then get to uh, this very end point like this. Okay, so there's um, the camera movement. I'm going to go ahead and hit stop for this. The next thing I want to uh, do is add a director group. So you can see, let's just right click in this uh, open gray area that you see here and say add new director group. And this will give us this director track that you see up within here. And we need to add a keyframe for it. Basically we're saying what camera should we be using and what do we want to do with this camera. In our case we want to fade from black uh, to fading in. So just like this icon we can see down here we're looking through this camera we could have multiple cameras down here and then the director group we can actually set keyframes for which camera we're using we're only using one so no big deal but we can select this icon here and now we're looking through this director group let's go ahead and select the director group track right here and then say add key for that and we're telling it to use which camera and we call this one main cam move so I'm going to go ahead and hit OK for that and then we've set a keyframe for that thing. The next thing, let's add a uh, fade to black on here. So let's go ahead and select the director group and then right click and then say add new fade track like this. This might seem a little bit weird, but um, we're going to come right here and say add a key right there. And then at, let's say three seconds into this roughly, right about here we'll add another key and nothing's gonna happen because we gotta change the values on this thing so I want this thing to be pure black at the very beginning I'm gonna right click on that first key and say set value and we gotta give it a value of one and then now you can see it turns black and then it's gonna fade in right here like this so let's go to the end of our animation and we'll add a key and then we'll come maybe you know about three seconds into here, right about 27, right around there, we'll add another key, and the value of this, let's right click on this and say the value should be zero, but we want it to be a value of one, right click on there and set that to one at the end, and then now let's take a look at what we've got going on here, we'll play this, you can see it fades in, just like that, so I don't want to go all the way to the very end, let's click this here, and just make sure it works for the fading out so you can see it's going to fade to black like that okay so that's everything set up with our camera there to give the motion and the fading in and out let's just go ahead and close this down when you actually close it down it actually is the thing that saves this matinee which seems a little bit odd so we can actually find that matinee actor that we've got and we can give this a, a name so we can right click on here and say edit and rename and let's just call this main cam matinee actor like that and we can tell it to play on level load so as soon as the level loads we can play that we can also tell it to loop like that so let's just go ahead and play and I'll hit shift F11 to go in full screen mode like this and so it's just gonna pan through my world just like what you see here and when it gets to the very end we should have this thing to where it just uh, fades to black for us and since we uh, told it to loop it's gonna sit here and it should go through the uh, looping sequence for this okay so I'm gonna hit escape and hit F11 so that's how we can get a uh, little kind of movie